Hello, we're back again today. Weather's a little bit nicer. The rain has stopped. And uh, as I mentioned in our last video visit, uh, today we began insulation. So I'm getting out a little bit late in the day and our crew was incredibly efficient. So they're in and out already. But we're, we'll go inside in a minute and we'll take a look at the first phase of inst insulation, which uh, was the Bibs system it is a dense pack blown in cellulose. It's a great product, so let's go inside and take a look. So we're inside the house now, and as you can see behind me, um, the insulation has been installed. It is referred to as a bibs system. That is a blown in blanket system. And it starts with first the application of this netting across the face of uh, the studs of all the exterior walls. Um, it's put up, it's stapled in place, and it's, um, it's, it's installed uh, quite tight. They call it drum tight so that it can contain the insulation um, appropriately. And then they come in, they got uh, their hoses uh, under pressure, and they spray. You can sort of see an entry point here. They spray uh, the cavities, and they just fill them with the uh, blown-in um, cellulose insulation. It's uh, referred to as a dense pack installation um, and our result is 3.5 pounds of cellulose per square foot uh, which makes it actually rather firm, rather dense. Uh, some folks get concerned about settlement uh, but the uh, pressure that it's put uh, in at and the density that's obtained um, makes it very stable in the, in the wall cavity. So with blown-in uh, cellulose, what we achieve is an R value of R21 in this uh, five and a half inch uh, wall cavity. And uh, that's a great rating, actually code is R13, so we're substantially above code. But the other real benefit to this installation is the ability to block air. So because the cellulose is blown in under pressure, it fills in every nook and cranny, um, all voids around outlets, uh, wires running through the wall, anywhere there's a gap or a void, it's completely filled and it makes that wall very, very tight. And so while R value is very important, R being the resistance to heat transfer and the higher the better, the higher resistance the better, the other key component to making an energy efficient house is to control air movement through your wall systems. And sometimes that's referred as to making your house tight. And the reason that's important is because with, uh, with a home, the, in, the interior is always conditioned, uh, or at least everything that we build. And so you constantly have pressure differentials between the outside environment and the inside environment. In the winter, it's warmer and humid relative to the colder, dry um, outside environment. And in the summer, the opposite. You're cool and dry inside, but you're very warm and humid outside. And because of those two di differing environments, there's a, there's a pressure differential and there that wants to always find a balance so in the winter your indoor uh, conditioned air is trying to push through to the drier uh, uh, less humid air outside and in the summer it's the opposite the hot humid air outside is pushing through your wall or trying to to get inside so to the extent that we can make the house tight and limit that air movement as much as possible we're going to have much better success in the performance of the home and the energy demand. I once had someone tell me, and I hear it quite often, that, oh, your houses have to breathe. And uh, my response is they don't need to breathe. They're not living environments. Um, what they're referring to is the fact that if you make a house very tight, uh, you could actually get indoor air pollution in a, in a reduced uh, quality indoor environment. And so when you make your house tight, what you have to do is also control the interior climate. Um, you have to ventilate it properly. And so part of our HVAC system includes mechanical ventilation of the house where we will be drawing in air from the outside and conditioning it and cycling out stale air. Uh, it's an added component to the system that's not typically used, but because we're making this house so tight, we have to take extra measures to control the quality of the indoor air. Um, but, but by doing that now, we have the ability to... Uh, limit air movement through the house, increase performance and reduce energy demand overall, and we think that that's a great trade-off. So I've got a sample of the uh, blown-in cellulose here. It is ground newspaper, 
and it's treated with borate. So the, uh, the ground newspaper has great insulation properties, um, and sometimes I hear concerns about it in the walls with regards to uh, moisture or even uh, pests. So borate is a natural product. The great thing about it is that it is a very low toxicity uh, level. As a matter of fact, it's lower toxicity than table salt. So it's very safe from that perspective, and it naturally repels uh, pests and um, uh, is not susceptible to mold and mildew. So uh, by treating the cellulose with that, you've really made it a robust product. And when we blow it in under, uh, under pressure and get the density we get, um, the insulating properties of it are, are exceptional. Uh, as I mentioned before, we get an R21 out of it and uh, great sound deadening uh, properties as well. So tomorrow is phase two of insulation. We will be uh, coming in, it'll be a new crew, a different crew, and they will be installing a spray foam insulation on the bottom side of the roof system and any gable walls above the ceiling line. Uh, that is going to create uh, the conditioned attic space that we spoke about. Um, the difference with this insulation is typically you would have insulation on your attic floor and your attic area would be unconditioned and uh, incredibly hot in the summer and uh, incredibly um, uh, cold in the winter time. By moving the um, insulation envelope up to the roof system, we've created a conditioned attic space and uh, the home will perform uh, much better that way. We'll talk about that tomorrow as we come out and, uh, and view some images of the crews doing that install. But until then, I'm Matt Bow with Matthew Bow Design Build, and we look forward to our next visit here at our Net Zero Project in Leesburg. Have a great day.